Are you a good cook? What's your favorite dish to prepare? I'll tell you what mine is. I enjoy making spaghetti with ground turkey meat for my grandsons. And when I boil the spaghetti, I put a little olive oil and a little salt in the water. That's what we're going to talk about today. Not how to season our food, but how to be salt and light in the world. Hi, I'm Dr. Laverne Tolbert, and welcome to Sunday School Made Simple. Thank you for joining us as we continue to explore the Word of God using the Precepts for Living commentary. Remember to hit the bell at the bottom of this video to subscribe to our show so you won't miss out on any new lessons. Now, if you would like your teaching to go to the next level, subscribe to PreceptsForLivingOnline.com for excellent resources you can access on your tablet, phone, or laptop, or iPad. <laughs> go to PreceptsForLivingOnline.com and get your resources today. We're continuing this quarter's focus, which is covenant in God. These next four lessons are from the book of Matthew when Jesus preached the Sermon on the Mount. He gives us guidelines about how we are to live in the new covenant. As you know, each week we make Sunday school simple with an easy to understand format. The text for you students of the word and teaching tips for those of you who teach. Today's lesson title is Jesus teaches about fulfilling the law. And this explores Jesus' teaching on being salt and light in the world. Let's begin studying the text with our lesson aim. By the end of the lesson, we will contrast the righteousness Jesus taught with that of the Pharisees, discuss what it means to be salt and light in our own righteousness, and identify things that keep us from being salt and light in our communities. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for Jesus and for the Word made flesh. Help us as we study your Word today in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's read our first set of verses from our scripture lesson from Matthew 5. We're beginning at verses 13 through 16 in the New Living Translation. You are the salt of the earth. But what good is salt if it lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, the lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. It is the same way with you. Let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Well, these are instructive words. Let's talk about what's important to know. There are two important points to know. Number one, Season the world like salt. Number two, shine like light in the world. So I know you've heard this metaphor. Jesus is using metaphor, and it's a figure of speech to compare one thing to another. And he's teaching about the sermon. He's teaching the Sermon on the Mount and describing the character of kingdom people, those who are in the kingdom of heaven, what is life like for them? How are they to live? During their daily interactions in secular society, Christians are to be salt and light. So, what does it mean to season the world like salt? Salt was used for a variety of purposes in the first century Roman world. Seasoning, a cleaning agent, fertilizer, or preservative. Salt was useful and it improved whatever it came in contact with. Whether it was food, it made the food taste better, or the ground, it helped fertilize the ground, or clothing to clean it. Everything that came in contact with salt was better. 
Jesus stressed that believers should be the same. We should be consistent and positively impact everyone around us. He says salt that has lost its saltiness is useless. It's good for nothing. Throw it away, trample it underfoot. Believers, we must retain our flavor and our savor, our usefulness to make the world better. Otherwise, we're worthless and we won't fulfill our purpose. So how do we maintain our saltiness? Just by doing what you're doing today. We are studying God's word. He is reminding us of so many key points that keep us close to the vine, that keep us close to him, and therefore our, we will remain salty. So we're also called to shine our light into the world. The analogy here is that we're to stand out we're not to blend in with the world. Christians should lead the way so that others are drawn to the light. You know, the world is dark with sin and people are looking for hope and an answer to their problems. And Christ is the answer. To people around us, it should be obvious that we know Jesus, but how we love and encourage people, how we care for those in need, how we speak up for the helpless. The way we live should inspire others to want to know Jesus. Well, let's look at those last set of verses from this lesson. Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 through 20 from the New Living Translation. Don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. I tell you the truth. Until heaven and earth disappear, not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. So, if you ignore the least of these commandments and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's laws and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. But I warn you, unless your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Wow, those are some harsh words for the disciples. Remember that crowd that's sitting around as Jesus is teaching on this mountain, not just the 12 disciples, but a very large crowd, many of whom he had healed and cast out demons in, in Matthew chapter 4. So they're listening to this, and that's like, whoa. And I bet you one thing, I bet the Pharisees and those leaders were there too. So what are the two points we should remember from what we just read? Jesus fulfills the law and the disciples follow the commandments. So what do we mean when we say Jesus fulfills the law? Jesus was accused by the Pharisees and religious leaders of teaching against the law of God. But Jesus corrects that fake news. <laughs> Jesus completes the law. He does not do away with it. He was the sinless son of God, the Messiah, the only one who could faithfully keep all the law and fulfill the expectations of the prophets in the Old Testament or Hebrew scriptures as they knew it to be. Jesus lets everyone know that nothing in God's law will be thrown out until it has been fulfilled. God's word is more dependable than the earth and the heavens. That's some security. And now, what does it mean about disciples following the commandments? As followers of Jesus, we're told to keep the commandments of God as well. But rather than trying to keep them for outward appearances, like the Pharisees who are always trying to impress somebody, they're always trying to prove something, no. We're called to follow God in our hearts, and then our actions should follow. That is a short lesson.
But you know what? If we do what the Word of God says, and we read that over and over again, it'll change the way we live in the world around us. So, let's talk about what's important to feel now that we know what's important to know. We should feel honored to be called to represent Jesus in the world. It doesn't get more simple than that. Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's the Lord of everything. It's a privilege to serve him. Jesus does not want us to be hidden in our houses of worship. Worship is not just on Sunday, but throughout the week. And we're to be present in the world with people so they can receive the love of God. We should feel convicted for times when we ignored God's commands or, or felt they weren't important for us as Christians. Big mistake. <laughs> Jesus fulfills all the commands of God and he calls on us to submit to him. And the Holy Spirit will empower us to do the same. Well, that's what's important to feel. Now, what's important to do? We should follow the commandments of God. Duh. <laughs> we should do the works of God so that people see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. When we love our neighbors by giving and serving, encouraging, advocating, feeding, listening, blessing. Oh my goodness, we represent God well. We're called to stand out from the selfishness in the world and make a difference in the lives of those around us. If we do this, believers, I'm telling you, we will let our light shine, yes? And we will be salt and life and light in the world. Well, time for our teaching tips. Now that you are challenged, <laughs> how would you teach this lesson effectively? You know, first of all, you have to pray. So pray that your students will have receptive hearts and minds to be obedient to God's word and that you'll be creative and use a variety of methods to help your students understand. And then pray that your students will apply what they learn to their lives. And you know what, I wanna just add this little point about prayer. Once I was teaching a junior high class and they were so disruptive, I did not want to come to class to teach. It was that bad. But one day I decided, well, why don't I pray? And I didn't want anybody to see me, you know, calling on God and calling down fire. That wasn't really what I wanted to do, but I needed the Holy Spirit to help me with these students. So I closed the door and I didn't have any oil or anything. If I did, I would have laid hands with the oil, but I just used my hands and I just started praying. Father, I just bind silliness. I pray, God, that you would cast out foolishness. And I went around that room. I prayed. I laid hands on every chair. I laid hands on the, the board. I laid hands on the walls. I prayed for those students that they would receive the word of God, that they would not be distracted. Oh, my goodness. I prayed. And guess what? When they walked in to the class, they came in with their Bibles. They were In those days, we were carrying paper Bibles. And they came in with their Bibles. And they sat down. And it was the first time I was able to teach them, except I was so surprised that they weren't tossing things and acting out that I could barely teach. And I thought, oh, prayer works. And then I realized, who doesn't want students to learn? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and spiritual wickedness on high places. I know I didn't quote that right, but you know the scripture, Ephesians 6. We wrestle against spiritual wickedness in high places. The devil doesn't want our students to get the word of God. We better pray. Pray when you teach your lessons. And God will do something in the hearts of your learners that you cannot imagine. Well, now that you've prayed, how would you open the lesson or hook your students? Well, why not use the same hook that I just demonstrated today? Put on an apron, get a colander, a pot, and salt shaker, and 
and ask what's your favorite meal to cook. Let the students answer and they may even want to swap recipes. This is a fun time for your class. And then transition into the scripture lesson by focusing on the importance of using the right seasoning for your food. Now that you've done that, you're ready for your book or present the scriptures. Invite volunteers to read the entire portion of scripture. Ask them what stood out to you is, or resonated with you from these verses. And then students want to talk to one another. They don't always want to hear the, the teacher's voice. So put them into small groups. So much occurs in small groups and you're the guide of these groups. And let them answer the two questions and search the scriptures. Give them enough time to relax and talk to one another. And then get to the look or explore the meaning. Ask, is there someone in your community who needs a little salt? <laughs> someone who needs the light of Jesus in their lives, how can you help? What can you do? Can you fix a meal for someone? Can you spend time to visit for a few minutes? Can you help with childcare? What can you do to help someone in need? And you know what? If anyone says, well, there's no one that I, I know who needs my help, I would ask you to challenge them Go to the senior citizen's home in your community and say, I'd like to volunteer. I'd like to just roll people out into the sunshine or roll them into the cafeteria or sit and listen to them or read to them. Oh my goodness, one time I did that and the woman that God sent me to minister to was an evangelist. She had lived her whole life teaching and preaching the gospel. And her sister had taken care of her, but she was at a point now where she was now in a, a, a nursing home, a senior citizen's home. And she was my charge. Oh my goodness, we got so close. And she would, it was just a blessing. So as your students are looking for someone to help, remember the elderly in our community. Now, once they've identified that, go to the Took, or the next step for application. Ask a volunteer to read Liberating Lesson and then answer the questions at the end of that paragraph. And also read Application for Activation. That's what we do with what we've learned. And of course, end the class, let your students, maybe give your students an uh, opportunity to end the class in prayer. That's our lesson for today. Let's talk mailbag. Well, I took off my apron for mailbag, so <laughs> I want you to listen to Alan, who is Minister Alan Reynolds, or Alan, who's going to answer our question, which is, how are we salt and light in the world? Give us an example. So that's a great question, and it looks different for different people, depending mm -hmm. on where God's placed you, right? Mm -hmm. Salt impacts where it is. Light impacts where it is. And in a big room, there needs to be more light than there does in a smaller room. This looks like to me, um, I'm really passionate about youth. Mm -hmm. And so I spend a lot of time with high school students, mm -hmm. uh, volunteering, coaching, um, you know, helping out. And one of the big ways I do this is my old high school, they'll have events going on. Um, they'll have different things that are happening, particularly mm -hmm. with theater, a program I came through. Oh, so, so. Theater. Raised in the theater. So you acted. I acted, yes. Oh my I mean, goodness, I, he's musical so talented. Theater, not, yes, really? like speech, you know, oh, individual events. Oh, I'd love events. to come hear you. Oh my gosh, so yeah. <laughs> um, and I help help coach the kids at my local high school. Uh, but even after season is over, mm -hmm. after I'm you know done with my dedicated time, mm -hmm. they're doing plays, and I'll stop in just to be able to be present, to give oh. feedback, you know, to help out. And it didn't hit me how much an impact that made until a couple of years ago, uh, when I was still doing it as kind of a responsibility. One of the kids came up to me at the end of the season and said, "You know, Mr. Reynolds, you being here." and being a Christian and and knowing they know I'm a minister you know they know yes. that I do that outside of when I'm with them and I don't you know have to talk a lot about my you know Jesus I don't have to try to you know beat them over the head with scripture but he mm -hmm. said I know you're a minister and the fact that you're able to be here in the theater where there's always a lot going on mm -hmm. and they see other kids you know acting out 
them seeing me and seeing how I comport myself encouraged him. He says, I can do this and still be faithful to God. Oh, and it meant the world. That's to me. goose pimples. It meant the world to me to hear uh. that from, you know, a, a little boy who didn't look like me, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. just to hear his his testimony that my example had been salt and light for him. Wow. Um, just that I was like, that's it. That's why that's why I do this. There it is. <laughs> Go and do likewise. What can we say? I mean, you know, that is such an example. And, and we want to say this. So many of you are already doing it. We mm. know this. You are already salt and light in your communities. You're helping the elderly. You're going to senior citizens' homes. You're helping the homeless and children in after-school programs. You're doing so much. Our community appreciates you. Mm -hmm. And we say thank you, thank you, thank you. God says thank you, thank you, thank you on his behalf for ministering to those who need some salt and light. You're doing a great work. Wow. Well, thank you so much for joining Sunday School Made Simple. Remember to subscribe by hitting the bell at the bottom of this program here and do like us. Also, visit preceptsforlivingonline.com for your digital commentary and for other resources. So as we close, we're going to have Minister Reynolds read our Keep in Mind scripture, which is Matthew 5, 16, which we all should know. Again, from the King James <laughs> Version. Yes. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Oh my goodness, they cannot help but glorify God when we are salt and light in the world. God bless you. Have a good Sunday school class on Sunday.